Photoshop and Clip Studio Paint are undoubtedly one of the most popular digital art software around the globe. They've both been around quite a while and have been used by a number of creatives of all types. It's true that outside the tight-knit community of creatives, Photoshop is primarily the one software the layman thinks about when thinking about digital creativity. However, would that really make it better than Clip Studio Paint? Well, we're going to find out. So, without further ado, let's jump right into the video. In this section, we'll have a basic overview of both software to get a general idea. Photoshop does not need much of a definition, but for the sake of this video, let's give you a refresher. Adobe Photoshop is a raster graphics editor, with vector support as well. At its core, the software is meant for editing pictures. The software can work on Windows, Mac OS, and iPad OS. You can get the software by subscribing to it. You can either get a subscription just for Photoshop for 31.49 USD a month, or you can get Adobe's entire software roster for 79.49 USD a month. Having the entire Creative Cloud services is a much better option for professional creatives who might need more than just one software. Clip Studio Paint is a digital art software by Celsius. The software supports both bitmap and vector. Clip Studio is mainly used for digital drawing, painting, animation, and comic creation. We can already see the divergence between Clip and Photoshop, but let's not get ahead of ourselves here. Clip can work on Mac OS, Windows, iPad OS, iOS, Android, Chrome OS, and it supports seven languages. For Clip, you can either purchase it one time for 49.99 USD for Clip Studio Paint Pro, which is best suited for illustration, or Clip Studio Paint X for 219 USD, which has plenty of pro features such as manga and animation features. Photoshop has the usual digital art program look and interface. The menu bar is at the top. The toolbar is on the left, the properties panel is on the right with layers, channels, paths, colors, swatches, and so on and so forth. If you select the color wheel tab from the top panels and the layers tab from the bottom panel, you would have a very familiar look to other digital art software. And lastly, of course, the canvas is in the middle. The color of the interface can be changed from a dark gray look to an almost white one. Photoshop can also be customized for a certain workflow. You can either customize it to your specific needs or use the pre-made workspace options, such as painting, 3D, or photography. Clip Studio Paint is a lot different than a usual digital art software in terms of interface. It can seem a little cramped and overwhelming, but luckily it is customizable. Let's explore the default workspace. Menu bar at the top, the toolbar on the left, and canvas in the middle aside, Clip has extra panels here and there. Firstly, next to the toolbar, we have three different panels that have a dynamic reaction to the toolbar. They change in content depending on the tool selected. If the pen tool is selected, the first panel will display different brushes, and the second one will display different properties, and the last one will display size options, for instance. The last panel, however, hosts everything that has to do with color, the wheel, the swatches, and so on and so forth. The command bar on Clip Studio Paint is under the menu bar. It's slightly pushed to the right. It hosts the most commonly used options in the software, such as undo and redo. Clip's right side hosts three panels, the navigation panel with a preview of your work, the layer property panel, and lastly, the layers panel. And next to these panels is a small bar for other quick access options. Luckily, Clip is customizable in a way that helps declutter the workspace, and there are plenty of tutorials to help you do so. Photoshop is the kind of software that hosts many features that can suit different creative ventures. It even has a workspace that is dedicated to different things, but at its core, it remains a software with tools and a workflow geared towards photography. For instance, we can find the hue and saturation tool, cropping, layers, levels, sharpening, healing brush, exposure, vibrance, dodge and burn, clone stamps, and so on and so forth. 
These tools, plus some brushes here and there, can help you create an illustration. The software is fully capable of that, and it is sought after by other illustrators for that, as well as the fact that it's the industry standard. This popularity made it so that people make plugins for the software that are catered to painters and illustrators, so that anything Photoshop natively lacked, it has in plugins. All in all, Photoshop is capable of photography, illustration, and graphic design. And since all the tools for these can be easily interchangeable, it makes Photoshop a one-size-fits-all for creatives, especially those who do different things at once. However, this strength of Photoshop is also its Achilles heel. If you're a person who seeks to focus on one venture rather than all three, it would be much smarter learning a software that is entirely dedicated to what you want to learn. Because A, it's easier to learn, you don't have to struggle too much, and B, it's faster to learn and specialize in. On the other hand, Clip Studio Paint is immediately specialized in the world of 2D art, illustration with its subgenres, and animation. The software knows its audience and caters to them. For instance, the software has countless mesmerizing brushes in all different types with many customization options. Clip's brush engine is its biggest selling point, and it works for it since the main target audience here is illustrators. In addition, the software adds 3D models to the mix with full customizability, giving artists an easy way to get references. The software also allows you to use vectors like its raster, taking the pros of both. The fluidity and artistry of raster and the scalability and practicality of vector and mixing them in one. Rulers for all of your comic and manga needs are also available in clip, such as perspective, symmetrical, and concentric circle. The understanding Clip has of its audience allows for the creation of tools that fit their needs exactly. This is best illustrated in the Fill tool, for instance. It can detect gaps automatically and fill them in with the desired color just by going over that space with the stillus. These are just some highlights of the software's many interesting features. All in all, the tools and workflow of the software cater to illustrators and animators in every way possible. Photoshop is notorious for its steep learning curve, especially if you have no prior experience using a digital art software. But one great thing that works to its benefit in this regard is how it's widely used as well as being the industry standard, making for a high demand when it comes to tutorials on the software. For this reason, you'll find many high-quality tutorials that can walk you through the entire software and that are suited for a fresh green beginner. You'll also find a big community that can help, whether you're an illustrator, photographer, or graphic designer. Clip also rivals Photoshop in the steepness of its learning curve. You'll find the software hard to navigate, especially with its unique interface. So we highly recommend you rearrange the interface to make it simpler and less cramped by following tutorials on YouTube, such as this one by Simon, customizing your Clip Studio Paint workspace. As for the rest, Clip has a much smaller community and reach than Photoshop, so you might notice that finding good tutorials is kinda hard, but they are there nonetheless. In this department, it's safe to say that Photoshop has the upper hand. Both software are hard to learn, but Photoshop has a bigger community and more tutorials. Alright, so who wins? Once again, it depends. I know you hate that answer, but it's the truth. If you're an illustrator or an animator, Clip Studio Paint is the way to go. The variety of tools and features it offers that are specially catered to your needs for a fraction of the price that Photoshop requires is just so great, greater than it can be ignored for Photoshop. If you're a photographer or a painter and getting into the industry is something you're focusing on, Photoshop should be the one to choose especially if Photoshop experience is required, which most times it is. So really think about what you want to do and where you want to go and go from there. So that was that for our video today. We hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. Let us know in the comments below what your thoughts are on the matter. With that said, thank you for watching as always and see you next time.